welcome back to the Sincere Reform Podcast. My name is Zach. I'm here with Brandon like normal. And in this week's episode, we are going to be talking about the uh, sin of pride. Uh, this is a very important one to hit because, you know, many theologians have described pride as being a sort of a root sin. And I think that that's probably a very uh, helpful way to look at it. Uh, pride, I think, goes uh, hand in hand with ingratitude. And those kind of things really create that uh, mentality, that spirit that we see back in the garden where woman and Adam committed that, that primal sin. And that begins to then shape who we are as that sin is imputed to us and corrupts us. We begin to think then that we are people who are prideful, exalting ourselves. And I fondly recall reading a lot of Martin Luther's works as he talked so much about humility and how humility is joined with faith, and that humility becomes the, you know, something of a chief Christian virtue, you can say, that kind of undergirds um, everything else that comes from the Christian life as we depend upon God in Christ. And so I think it's very appropriate to be thinking about and speaking about uh, pride today. And so I want to ask you, Brandon, to maybe get us kicked off here. How might we begin to discuss and think about pride? What might be some places in Holy Scripture that can help, uh, help orient us toward this uh, sin of pride. Sure. You know, I think the the um, Biblical Counseling Coalition, uh, on their website, they were they had a place where they were kind of describing pride and, and especially how it's how it's come up in various counseling scenarios that, that uh, they've dealt with. But they had a kind of, a, I think, a very helpful uh, description of pride that kind of gets to the heart, I think, of the matter. And they said, pride is a heart attitude sin that overflows into a person's motivation, decision-making, and activities. The heart of pride is focused on self. Prideful people believe they deserve better than what life has brought them. They become sorrowful, resentful, and even jealous of other people and their successes. Pride breeds self-pity, which is a major component in depression. Typically, people who struggle with pride will live life based on how they feel and expect everyone else to accommodate them and adapt to their moods. Two key characteristics of pride are independence and rebellion. It should not be too difficult for us to understand why this is so. The truth is that we all want our own way uh, about things, and we usually want to do almost anything to have it our way. The sinful nature leads us to desire independence and, and to rebel at the thought of being under anyone's control or authority. The prideful person already thinks uh, very highly of himself or herself. People infected with pride typically think so much of themselves that they believe the world should revolve around them. The only thing important to a prideful pr uh, person is getting their needs filled. It may be an emotional need, a desire for attention, or a resistance to conform to social norms in order to be seen as an individual. Prideful people struggle with bitterness, revenge, conceit, self-pity, a competitive nature, gossip, slander, vanity. They believe a, they display a desire to be noticed, such as disguised as shyness. They typically have a lust for attention, approval, and praise. Those who attempt to build up them psychologically only assist them and further self-indulgence. So kind of a penetrating, insightful um, description of how it, how it might manifest in, in your life or in, in a person's life. So Zach, maybe we can talk about how the Bible describes, you know, taking things off, putting things on, there's sins we should take off, there's good things we should put on. Maybe you can start with how the Bible describes taking this off and how does it describe, you know, this haughtiness and pridefulness? Yeah, so the, the what that needs to be taken off is described variously within the Holy Scripture. Let me help us with a few verses here. Uh, Psalm 10, verse 4. In his pride, the wicked man does not seek the Lord. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. Proverbs 11, verse 2. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with the humble is wisdom. So we see there in the, those first two verses that... God is absent in the mind of the proud and the, the, the prideful, um, basically as a vacuum there that more or less you could say that he, he puts himself in that place of God, uh, whereas the, uh, the, the humble person it would be the one who has God 
and present in his mind is uh, is the wise is the wise one. A few more texts here. For first, uh, Proverbs sixteen verse five: Everyone who is arrogant in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Be assured, he will not go unpunished. Then later in the same chapter, pride goes before destruction and haughty spirits before a fall. So it's a very um, uh, insecure place to be when you're in that uh, position. Proverbs 8, 13, The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil, pride and arrogance in the way of evil, and perverted speech I hate. These are very much uh, at odds with one another, of course. Uh, the, the humility that, that fears the Lord versus the pride and arrogance. Uh, Psalm 138, verse 6. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. And so, Brandon, kind of get a little bit of an idea here of what uh, we are to put off. Uh, maybe you can like situate us toward the opposite then. You know, if, if this is the scripture of the old man, kind of kind of say Adam, right? Mm -hmm. Then what should we put on with respect to the new man? Sure. Yeah, so obviously put off pride and boastfulness and self-exaltation and then put on these other qualities. And so, uh, for example, a few verses here. One, Proverbs 27, 2. Let another praise you and not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. I mean, a great reminder there, I think, that, you know, instead of walking around handing everybody your resume and saying, hey, I've done all these things, I was a captain of that team and president of this and that, and I made this in, you know, how many grades or whatever in, in school, or you know, walk around handing everybody your resume, um, let another praise you, not your own mouth. If, if you know, if I'm going to praise Zach, that'd be a great thing. Talk about all his accomplishments, okay. a great pastor, and... Um, and, so but, many. Yeah. Keep going. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just keep going. But, uh, but if he start, came off and just started doing that, it'd be, it'd be like, oh, this, this guy's a bit, a bit prideful. Here is, you know, going on for a half hour about himself. Um, so, you know, again, I think it's a great reminder of um, let an another praise you, not your own mouth. Philippians 2, 3, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility. Count others more significant than yourself. You know, I heard a pastor one time, he did traveling through Afghanistan, and he said it was interesting getting to know the culture in Afghanistan, and, you know, one of the things that uh, you do when you meet a stranger or you meet a new person, uh, if you're an Afghani, is you kind of size them up a bit. You know, you want to know in terms of class, are they below me in class? Are they above me in class? Are they older than me? Do I need to pay them respect? Do they need to pay me respect? And there's very much this kind of who's who's over who as you're sizing each other up here a bit. And so and kind of an interesting reflection then in terms of uh, Philippians 2.3, uh, but in humility, just count others more significant. Uh, as you meet someone, count them more significant than yourself. Instead of wanting to impose uh, over them constantly, um, allow them to, to be, be considered with, with more, with more um, uh, respect and, and, and so on. Romans twelve sixteen. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. So again, you know, we're I think we're attracted to maybe people who look uh, successful or look, you know, uh, grand or or whatever. But just a great warning of no, like associate with the lowly, the meek, the humble. Those are the people that Christ really prized. You know, he uh, he always. Um, uh, juxtaposes in in the Gospels, uh, sending out the rich young ruler, but at the same time embracing children and babies who can't um, who can't even speak for themselves. And so he's associating with the, the lowly. That doesn't mean that you know we 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 hate rich people or, or if somebody comes in and they uh, are well to do. We don't like them and we're not going to talk with them. But it just means we're not going to give priority to people uh, based upon some sort of you know earthly wealth or status or something. But that we really um, uh, consider ourselves. We associate with the lowly, never wise in our own sight. First uh, Peter five five. Clothe yourself, all of you, with humility toward one another, for God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And so, if God opposes the proud, we don't want to be something that God opposes. 
We want it to be something that God gives grace. And God, God gives grace to, to the humble. And so Peter is saying, then, clothe yourself with humility. Put humility on like a robe. Um, Romans 12, 3. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Uh, so don't think of yourself in these grand terms. You know, people who go and see like a superhero movie and they walk out thinking that they are that superhero. Uh, don't, don't have that mindset. Don't think too highly of yourself. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 14. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant. And so when we are tempted to be prideful, to boast, to be arrogant, to be haughty, then we are not being loving. Because loving is not those things. Loving is not arrogant. Uh, loving rather is patient and kind, um, clothed in humility. And finally, you know, it's interesting with, uh, you know, Jesus was, was giving this this um, kind of parable about um, about not boasting or not um, uh, claiming for yourself the best status, but associating with the lowly. Uh, and in Luke 14, 8 through 11, Jesus says, When you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honor, lest someone be more distinguished than you be invited. And he who invited you both will come to you and say, Hey, give your place to this person, and then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you may be honored in the presence of all who sit at the, at the table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. And just a great you know, reminder of, of not to just kind of presume and um, boast about yourself, but just to, just to associate with the, the lowly. And I, I think that you know, it, it exemplifies Proverbs 27 too that, that we read. Let another praise you, not your own lips. So you know, as we're thinking about it, you know, what are some ways that we can accomplish this? This kind of, you know, we're taking this off, we're putting this on. How can we maybe, if we're struggling in this area, if we're having a hard time taking off pride and putting on humility, uh, what are some things that we can do that maybe that, that could help us? Well, one, I think, pray about it. Ask God to give you humility. Ask God to crush your pride. Ask God to help you in this. We have, you know, the Holy Spirit living inside of us, and He's producing fruit, and um, and there's going to be spirit wrought obedience, and and these kinds of things. We can pray and ask God help us, help me to be humble. Uh, we can seek forgiveness of those that we were prideful toward. If our pridefulness, you know, burnt someone or hurt someone, we can ask forgiveness. Uh, we can ask others, you know, close friends to keep us accountable. Hey, if I start boasting about myself, if I'm just really starting to wax pridefully here uh, and, and show that I'm not humble, maybe you can, you know, t take me aside and just help me out. Uh, we can contemplate ways in which your, your heart is prideful uh, in order to kind of make you more aware. Like, what are some ways that you find that you're weak in? You know, where are places in which you are tempted to maybe exalt or be more prideful, uh, and then just be more aware in those in those places. It can be helpful to memorize passages of scripture that that talk about this. Some of the ones that we read here it would be great to memorize and just kind of think about these things day after day when you're tempted to reflect upon God's word about how He gives grace to the humble, but He opposes the proud, and we don't want to be someone that the Lord opposes. Um, guard our tongues when we speak. Uh, you know, the tongue is that fire that James talks about. And so we should guard our tongue if we're uh, thinking about, hey, I want to boast about myself or do this or that. Maybe we should take steps to have more of a filter where we kind of filter those things out. And then I think also, um, very importantly, sit under the ministry of word and sacrament, you know, Lord's Day after Lord's Day, because I think that, um, you know, as we're shaped by uh, the gospel, we're, we're confessing our sin, our sin is being forgiven, uh, we're beholding Christ and all that he did, word and sacrament, and then we're going forth in gratitude and thankfulness of what God has done uh, for us. I mean, it's, it's just a great place to be, Lord's Day after Lord's Day, in the church, being shaped, feasting on Christ through word and sacrament, being nourished by, by Him, uh, that's a great place to, to avail yourself to um, 
um, to um, help fight, I think, temptations to pride. So, Zach, maybe you can uh, give some closing reflections on this and also comfort us in the gospel because we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all been prideful at times. and Certainly. I mean, I, I think it's uh, helpful to go back to Philippians 2, which you read from earlier. I think that might be a good place to close here. Um, the verse you read earlier is so helpful. Uh, do nothing from a rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Well, as we mentioned earlier, the sin of pride is something that comes to us from the Garden of Eden. And as we heard these many scripture texts read, we recognize how far short we've fallen in terms of um, this, uh, the prohibition of not being prideful. We have indeed each of us uh, broken this law. We do it daily. We exalt ourselves. We fail to act like Christ so often. But I think we should be very much humbled, should we not, and, uh, and uh, comforted that we have uh, a second Adam who came for us and he, he perfectly fulfilled uh, God's will. He obeyed God perfectly, humbling himself even to the point of death, death on the cross. So where we have exalted ourselves, Christ's righteousness, which is imputed to us by faith alone, covers that. He bore that sin on the cross. And so as we think about the importance of humility, we have the solution for our pride in the, humil in the um, humiliation of Christ. But then by being joined to Christ now, we now have that pattern and that power by which we humble ourselves and grow in our Christ likeness. So let's press onward in this uh, great respect, yet not with fear, but out of a posture of um, confidence that our Savior has done all things well for us. So thank you for joining us this week on the Sense Reform Podcast. We hope that um, this encourages you toward that virtue of humility uh, and putting off uh, pride. We hope you join us next week. Uh, I'm Zach. I'm here with Brandon, sponsored by Westside Reform Church. Thanks again. Bye-bye.